Oh dear, Camilla. How unfortunate for you to expect your sister-in-law to pay for damages. I'm just a housewife and money is a foreign concept to me. I have no savings and I don't bother myself with trivial matters like part-time jobs. As if that weren't enough, my husband is gallivanting overseas for business, making it utterly impossible for me to burden him with such insignificant matters. I don't care if you're my sister-in-law or not, but you just crashed right into my brand new house. You really should be feeling more remorseful about this mess. It's a miracle nobody got seriously hurt, or worse. Ah, come on, that's an exaggeration. It's not like you can live in it anymore. What are you even saying? There's a massive hole in the living room wall. Who in the world would want to live in a house with a mess like this? It's a total disaster. Hey genius, ever thought about living upstairs instead? Let me enlighten you with a little story from high school days. My friend's place went up in flames and guess what? They brilliantly boarded up the charred hallway and carried on living in the unscathed part of the house. Voila! Problem solved! No way. That's not gonna cut it. It's not safe for starters. And seriously? What are we supposed to do during winter? Can't exactly cozy up on a freezing upper floor, right? We need a proper solution here, not some half-baked idea. All right, hear me out. I've got a solution for you. I'll take the house off your hands. I'm pretty handy with good old DIY stuff, you know? I roll up my sleeves and do all the repairs myself. Trust me, I'll do a better job than that building company you hired. Just you wait and see and I'll have this place looking better than ever in no time. So where are we supposed to live? Down by the docks, there are tons of rooms available for rent. Back in the day, those places used to house the families of the dock workers, but things changed when the shipping companies went belly up after the workers demanded more than they could afford. Anyway, the point is, there are some sweet deals to be found down there. Aren't you forgetting something? You are the one who caused all this when you drove your damn car through my living room. Look, I get it all right. I can just magically come up with the money for repairs and you're not keen on the living upstairs idea. Times have been tough since my company went bankrupt and I've been scraping by as a housewife. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't pay for a thing right now. But let's be real here. Whose bright idea was it to skip on insurance? Seriously, what were you thinking? Anyone could lose control of their wheels and crash into your precious house. Without insurance, you'd be in deep trouble. It's a tough pill to swallow, but we gotta face the consequences of our choices, you know? I think you've learned a valuable lesson here. If you had just gotten some third-party insurance, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. Don't you dare try to pin the blame on me. I can already see it coming. You'll say it's my fault for building a house right where you lost control, won't you? Give me a break. Good, point that. You have to pay for the damages. It's only fair. Oh, please. 200K? Do I look like I have stacks of cash lying around for your convenience? You must be out of your mind. You think that this is even remotely possible. Did that policeman explain it to you? You can't squeeze blood from a stone, genius. Just like I've been telling you, I'm just a humble housewife. There's absolutely no way I can scrape together $200,000. Hey, have you considered asking your husband or your parents to lend you the money? We cannot have a massive hole in the front of our house. It's not just about the cold and safety concerns. It looks downright hideous too. There's gotta be some way for you to make things right and find a solution. My husband does have some cash, but let me tell you, He's the epitome of stinginess. The guy even swipes toilet paper from the bus station if you can't believe it. He's a total tightwad, and it's frustrating as heck. As for my parents, things aren't exactly rosy there either. My dad had to take early retirement at 55, and he pretty much drank away most of the payout he got. It's a mess and I can't really turn to them for help. They might just disown me if I even bring it up. So yeah. It's a tough spot all around. Can you not make this about you? You wrecked my house and you need to make it right. Don't go giving me a sob story about your family. It doesn't concern me. I just need to fix my house. I told you I don't have any money and yet you're still harassing me and telling me to find a way. That sounds like a threat to me. How is that a threat? Find a way to suddenly give you $200,000? You sound like a mafia. Am I going to wake up with a horse head in my bed? A concrete ball gown, perhaps? 
A concrete ball gown? Look, Camilla, I didn't crash my car into your house because I wanted to, you know? It wasn't part of a master plan. Step one, take out the front wall. Step two, not pay for it. Your kid suddenly ran out into the road and I swerved to miss him. That's why I crashed into your house. Count yourself lucky. Would you rather have a smashed front room or a smashed dead kid? Why haven't you said anything about this until now? Were you just waiting to see how far your other excuses would stretch? If I did that, then your boy would be made out of to be villain. I wanted to save him all that. He had a bad enough experience by nearly being hit by the car. Your car? Yes, my car. Poor boy was scared out of his twits. I kept quiet about it, but you started threatening me and left me no choice. Ah, oh, what a load of rubbish. See? With that kind of denial and refusal to hear the truth, I didn't stand a chance. I'm automatically guilty, is that it? Do you have any proof that what I'm saying isn't what happened? Security camera footage, maybe? No, we don't. And I haven't asked the neighbors. Well, you just moved in. You wouldn't have had time to set up the cameras yet. So, without a shred of evidence to disprove my account of events, you make demands of huge amounts of compensation money? That's a bit presumptuous, don't you think? Rude, even. What kind of woman are you? Look, I feel bad about smashing into your house. Who wouldn't? But like, I already told you, I'm going to declare personal bankruptcy. I don't have a penny to my name, are you getting off on this? Having a little power trip? Does it make you feel big demanding huge amounts of money from someone you know that doesn't have a cent to her name? No amount of verbal diarrhea is going to get you out of this. I'll get my money one way or another. Did you have to say that? Come on, I'm under enough stress as it is. I don't have a car. Can you imagine how inconvenient that is? Unbelievable. Hi, I'm just following up on what I've overheard. Did my wife crash her car into your house? Yes, she did. She also said she declared personal bankruptcy recently, and there was no way she could pay for the repairs. I've just had that exact conversation with her. She claims that she has no money, and that asking you or her parents for even a loan is out of the question. So, we have a massive hole in the middle of our house, and no means of repairing it before winter comes. I'm so sorry for what happened. I'm relieved to see you are taking this seriously. I was expecting the same brush-off attitude I got from your wife. Perhaps we can solve this problem with level-headedness. If this is all true, then I have no sympathy for my wife. It certainly is true. She drove her car right into our house. You can come and have a look if you need confirmation. Shall I send you some photos? She's claiming that my son ran out onto the road suddenly, and she swerved to avoid him. But I don't believe her story for a second. Why do you doubt her story? Because when she crashed into our house, I called the police, of course. Nobody was hurt, thank God. So they interviewed her and us. There was never any mention of my child in her statement. Surely then was the time to say it. She only mentioned it much later on, when I started trying to get some money out of her, I think she panicked and thought of it trying to absolve herself of blame. I see. Hmm, well, yeah. If she only thought to mention it after giving her statement to the police, then it does lack credibility. Well, don't you worry. I'll make sure you get the $200,000. I have to warn you, that's only a rough estimate. The actual cost could be a lot more. Right. When you have an official coat, Please send it to me. I'll pay it in full. But the matter of your child needs to be looked into. If there is a chance that what my wife is saying is the truth, then we need to take that into consideration too. Oh, yes. I guess you want to make sure of the actual events. Of course. I still can't believe she'd do such a thing. It hasn't sunk in yet. She's pretty volatile at the best of times, but I owe it to her to see if she's actually telling the truth. She is my wife after all. I understand. I'll get back to you when I've spoken to the police again. Right. Thank you. I'm heading home. I should be back stateside the day after tomorrow, if I can get a flight at such short notice. Let's continue this then. Can you just leave work like that? This takes priority. Yes, of course. I really appreciate it. Have a safe flight. 
Hey, how long were you planning on ringing my doorbell? If you ring and no one comes to the door, that should tell you no one is home. It's common sense. Anyway, I've disconnected it. I know you're in there, so just open the door. You'll regret not talking to me. There you go, threatening me again. Who's out there with you, some of your Sicilian friends? I'll regret opening the door. I've already told you I'm insolvent. I can't even pay for my car to be fixed. I forbid you to declare bankruptcy. What's the sudden change of attitude? Who is this? This is your husband, William. What? Where are you? I thought you weren't coming back for another few months. I heard about what happened and dropped everything. You've really gone and done it this time. What the hell were you thinking? Did you think you'd get away with it? Hang on a second. That's not what happened at all. I've explained everything that happened to Camilla and she started threatening me. What are you talking about? You drove your car into her house. She's trying to discuss the matter with you and you're trying to wriggle out paying for the damages you caused by claiming bankruptcy. Like I told Camilla, I'm not the only one to blame here. Her son came out of nowhere. I had no choice but to take evasive action. If I hadn't done that, we'd be having a much more serious conversation. I've heard all about that too. It seems you only remember this as an afterthought. Why on earth would you not tell it to the police? I told Camilla this. If I had just told the truth, her son would have appeared to be the cause of it all. I imagine the poor little guy shouldering the blame of having caused a car to destroy his house. I thought about the burden of shame he would have felt the rest of his life. I was looking out for him. I was thinking of his future. How many more lies are you going to keep adding to your story? It would be best if you just came clean and face up to what you've done. No way, I'm not paying a nickel. I'm not the one who caused this. I did nothing wrong. If you still demand that I pay, I will declare bankruptcy. 200,000 is a huge amount of cash. I can't possibly pay that. I'm a victim. Her son is a real cause of this. All I did was try and save his life and this is the things I get? Thank you, Brooklyn, for saving my son's life. Now, give me all your money. Now, my own husband has taken the other side. I'm betrayed. Oh, how horrible it is to be cast aside by the one you love most. There is security camera footage from the house across the road. However... Oh? And? There doesn't seem to be any sign of the child you said you swerved to missing hitting. It would appear that you swerved for some unknown reason and accelerated into Camilla's house. That is what the video footage shows. Would you care to explain that? How about telling the truth this time? There is a video footage, Ben? Yep, from the house across the street. They had recently installed the latest kind, so it is shown clearly. Camilla received a copy yesterday. The police, of course, also have a copy. I've seen it too. I watch it over and over, trying to see if I could detect even the smallest hint of a child in the picture. However, you try and frame it. You are 100% to blame. And the driver is shown clearly? Yes, it is you without a doubt. You might have gotten lucky with one of those old grainy black and white cameras people used to use. But this was broad daylight and the video is 4K quality. I could even see the top of your snake tattoo that comes up the side of your neck. And the final nail in the coffin? You are taking a swig from a can of beer. There is no way out of this. It's a DUI at the least. Probably willful damage too. Not a lawyer in the country would touch it. By trying to hide it and blame it on a child, you've made it exponentially worse. Did you think you'd get lucky and be able to blame Camilla's son and get away with not paying anything? Wait, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Maybe I just thought I saw a kid come flying out in front of me. But it's nowhere near a DUI. I was thirsty. All there was in the fridge was a beer, so I took it, a single beer. I spoke to the police right after it happened and they didn't breathe test me. What does that tell you? So what are you trying to say? You know there are laws in this state forbidding open alcoholic drinks and vehicles. You were drunk and drove into someone's house. Somehow getting lucky that no one was in the living room. 
you are caught on camera drinking a beer and you would still try to get out of paying reparations? I'm astounded. I mean, I knew you were a little crazy. But I always found that unpredictable part of you fun. But you seem to be able to add lie upon lie without the slightest feeling of guilt. I'm sorry. I was lonely with you being away. Lonely? So who was the man in the passenger seat? Yes, Brooklyn. I saw him in the video. Oh, that is in there too, huh? I guess I should come clean then. You think? This should have all been told to the police when they first arrive on the scene. You've tried to cover it up with all your lies. I was overseas, away from my family, trying to satisfy my boss in order to get a promotion, and all the while you were off drinking and driving into people's houses and having an affair. Wait! I repent! I've seen the error of my ways. I'll never do it again. I throw myself in your mercy. Forgive me! I was only on my own. You'd have done the same thing. I'm not a monster. I won't divorce you right away. For a start, you are now in debt to me to the tune of $200,000 to be paid as soon as your first paycheck arrives. First paycheck? You know I don't have a job. He's been very helpful. He's going to introduce you to a friend of his who owns a factory. You can start there next week. See, I've taken care of it. I've done my best to clean up this mess you've gotten yourself into. A factory? What do I know about working in a factory? I've been a housewife for the last 10 years. And suddenly, you want me to work in a factory? What is it? A clothing factory? I don't know how to make clothes. No, no. Nothing as glamorous as that. It's a sardine cannery. Oh, God. And you're not to quit until the loan is paid in full. That's a lot of sardine cans. But who knows? You might make line or even shift manager. You'd get a small promotion. Cheer up. It's not like it's a terrible place to work with a bad safety record and lots of mysterious injuries. And you'll be paid for your work. It could have been so much worse, making car license plates in prison. And best of all, there is a worker's dormitory you can live in. You'll be able to cut back on living costs. Hang on, hang on. I can do physical labor. I haven't even walked further than a mall for more than 10 years. Please, William. I'll get a part-time job and pay you back little by little. This is Camilla again. It would appear that William has nothing further he wishes to say to you. What? Just listen to me. Why won't anyone hear me out? Okay, let's go inside the house, shall we? I have an agreement for you to sign. If you refuse, I'll have no other choice than to call the police. Okay, okay, got it. I'll open the door. Hey, Camilla, could you have a go at trying to convince William to leave me a way out? You what? There's absolutely no way I can work in a factory or live in a dormitory until I've paid back $200,000. It sounds like a prison sentence. I won't be able to see my kids. He's taken this all too far. Too far? So you'd think you'd be better off in an orange jumpsuit in prison? Shall I call the police and see what they make of the new evidence that has come to light? I can easily win in court and probably get a lot more than 200k. I have all the evidence I need. The judge won't take long to make a decision, I bet. No, I... You aren't in any position to make demands. Don't worry. You should be able to pay off the debt in about 15 years? Give or take a year or two, and maybe time off for good behavior? What? Just kidding. But I hope you enjoyed the fish factory. You will probably have all the sardines you can eat. Very healthy sardines. 15 years? Of canning fish? I feel sick. Hey, you never know. You'll be able to put your other skills to work in the factory, too. You know, when the machines break or the dormitory needs a bookshelf. You did say you were handy and loved DIY, right? <coughs> William took Brooklyn back to her hometown and got her settled into the dormitory for the factory workers at the sardine factory. Brooklyn's father tagged along to introduce her to the owner. Turns out... The job involves some serious backbreaking work, loading heavy boxes onto trucks. The work conditions are cramped, and it's a real challenge to communicate with the other workers who come from different countries. 
Once you get the hang of it and pick up the pace, the pay isn't too shabby. But for someone like Brooklyn who's never done physical labor before, it's a whole new level of grueling. I reckon she'll eventually get used to it, but it will take a few more months. On the bright side, she's finally owning up to what she did and taking responsibility. Now she's laser focused on paying back the money as fast as possible. And you know what? The best part of it all, William came through with the money we needed and our house has a living room wall back in place. Just to be safe, I've made sure to get the house insured against any future mishaps like this. I even invested in a sturdy fence that can at least slow down any rogue car. Dealing with such a selfish liar like Brooklyn was a nightmare, but I've definitely learned a lot from the experience. Things are pretty much back to normal for my family and I, but I can't say the same for Brooklyn. She's got plenty of time to reflect on her actions. Well, about 15 years, give or take.